Good afternoon, it is Friday, I've got the weekend off, a nice three day weekend. Today I'm going to the cinema to watch two movies. First I'm watching Civil War, and then I'm watching Back to Black. Back to Black first of all was by Amy Winehouse, so it's about her story from, I think from her teenage years to adult years to making music uh, from her beginnings, etc. And then quite a bit of it obviously takes place in England, England as well, so I'm looking forward to it. I'm not that hyped about it, but I found that was coming out like two weeks ago, I thought, hey, okay, I'll watch it. It should be interesting. But before that, I am watching Civil War, which seems to be a type of thing that a lot of people fantasize about. It's an American Civil War. America gets divided and there's a big Civil War going on. And uh, it seems to be taken, based on the trailer, it seems to be taken not just from the war perspective, but also from the perspective of um, civilians and journalists trying to tell the story. So uh, I'm intrigued to see how this goes. Um, it seems like you know, it's people's wet dreams and fantasies come to life, to be honest, because people talk about civil war all the time in certain countries, especially the US. And um, now you've got a whole movie about a civil war in America. <laughs> I was just like, OK, this is interesting. Um, hopefully it is a good story. And uh, I assume there's going to be a lot of brutality in it. But um, they actually released a map. They released a map of the US from this movie. There's two maps. But they're kind of similar, let me show you. But yeah, this is the first map. So uh, something that Americans pointed out is why on earth would Texas ally themselves with California? Like, that wouldn't make any sense. But even me, like even me, from an outsider looking in, I think there's no way these two would team up. <laughs> there's no way, especially the world, how the world is today as well. But um, yeah, they are part of the Western forces. Um Texas and California have allied themselves as the Western forces. They are basically the rebels, I think. And I'm guessing the loyalist states are the government. And there's a Florida alliance. What side are they on? I have no idea. I'm very confused about that. But uh, a very interesting map. There's even a second map. These are both official maps, I'm pretty, fairly certain. This one. So I'm, I'm confused there. This is Western forces, but this now says New People's Army. What does that mean? Is there four different... Like, what is the Florida Alliance? What side are they on? Because I seem like Western Florida forces are the rebels in this. And then the loyalist states are the government, allies, and everything. And they control the military, etc. It's very confusing. But either way, we're going to watch a movie about a civil war in the US. It sounds crazy and uh, hopefully it's a good story. It's just under two hours of quite a short film considering the premise. But um, yeah, let's see if it's good. Oh yes, we are here. I'm not watching in IMAX today actually, but yeah. There is showing in IMAX a lot of times today, but I'm watching one of the regular 2D screenings. Bring on the Civil War. Well, not in real life. I am very much anti-war in real life. I've always, I always will be anti-war. But uh, in movies, you know, you can pass in movies. But um, yeah, again, like I said, like five times already. Hopefully it's a good story because uh, this movie is a very bizarre idea. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how they portray it. I will watch that too. <laughs> and that, looking forward to that. Even though I don't think I needed a fourth one, I'll watch it. Yeah, no music today, that's weird. No copyrights, yes. I watched this early, two weeks ago. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, so no music inside, which means I can stay inside without being copyrighted, even though this channel's not monetized in any way, but I still like to keep it non-copyright. Um, yeah, that was something. Um, as the trailer showed, it's from the perspective of journalists and photographers, so they're trying to capture the war, rather than, you know, be on a certain side of trying to capture what's going on. Um, they're trying to interview both sides, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very brutal. Um, focuses a lot a lot more on journalism than it does on the war but you still see the brutal parts of the war um, you see independent factions you see states that are like separate like they're not part of any war they're just living their own life just in their own quarters but you've got people on the roofs just protecting them and you've got states where it's just a barren wasteland and where it's all out war and there's hostiles everywhere and you don't know who's on which side like the western forces 
they don't all wear uniforms. Some some wear military uniform and others don't. Um, and yeah, there are certain things where you don't know like which side you're looking at here. Um, there's some evil people, some brutal people. There's some people where you think are they part of any side or they part of their own game. But there are some pretty awful people in this. And uh, yeah, it's uh, documented and uh, it's obviously a fictional story. And I'm glad it is. <laughs> and I'm, I hope it I hope it stays fictional. But the idea of American Civil War is scary, and I think this movie kind of like shows how scary that can be. And uh, yeah, um, it's very interesting. It stars Kirsten Dunst. Um, I recognise she was answering, she was like uh, answering a lot of questions about different things, like Spider Man, because she used to be in Spider Man, obviously. And I was just like, why is she in the press a lot lately? Ah, she's because when you when you're an actor and you've got a new movie coming out, it's a big blockbuster movie. You you go on a press tour. And the media ask you questions, and the media don't know, always ask you about the movie you're in. They always ask you about other things as well. And because she was in, famous for being in Spider-Man, obviously, I, I was just like, why is she always talking about it? Every day I'm hearing about something new. Now it makes sense. I forgot she was in this for some reason. Also, the, the girl from Priscilla's in this. She, the girl who plays Priscilla in the Priscilla movie that came out at like, the end of last year. She's in this. Uh, I was just like, wait, isn't that Priscilla? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. But uh, yeah, um, as a story, uh, I'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. It wasn't like this, this incredible movie, but it does capture the tr tragedy and the brutality of a war or a, what a civil war could be. So, um, yeah, it was well filmed. Um, it was really interesting how they captured it in the from the perspective of photographers and journalists. I was just like, okay, there's a clever way of doing it. And uh, I think they did well. I think they did very well. So, yeah, I'll give it 7.5 out of 10. But I don't think it was like a great movie or anything, but... It was, you know, it was worth a watch for a fictional story. And I hope it stays fictional. So, yeah, um, next up is the Amy Winehouse movie. Um, hopefully it's good. Let's do this. Actually, before we go in, um, the best part of Civil War in terms of, like, you know, how the movie was portrayed was the ending, the final scene, uh, the final battle in general. Uh, the final battle takes place in D.C., where the president is. Uh, the rebel forces uh, are on their way there, and there's this big final battle, and the press are right in the middle of it. Um, the way it's filmed is epic, to say the least. Wow, that was deep, dark and depressing. I still remember I was in school when um, they announced that she died. That was like very shocking throughout the entire school. Um, I was in year 11, I think. Um, yeah, that, 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 that lines up well with the year. Um, obviously, you know, she died for you know, certain reasons and I do like lean to that in this movie. Like she starts using, you know, she drinks a lot, does a lot of drugs, etc. But she also is a great musical artist. So they kind of go into all of that in good detail you hear some of her best songs you hear how she comes up with them like her ideas behind them a lot of her songs are you know due to tragedy <laughs> due to things that happen to her uh, the trails and other stuff um, but yeah it is a story about her life it celebrates the good parts but also shines a I wouldn't say shine a light but like it, it tells you about plenty of the bad parts and obviously Blake uh, who she was married to how she always wanted kids as well she wanted kids quite a lot um, which never happened, of course. Obviously, she died at the earliest 27. Very tragic story. Uh, obviously, went to rehab a couple of times, made a song about that, of course. Obviously, Back to Black, of course. The, basically, all of her most popular songs were pretty much in this. She either performed it, or you'd hear it, or, you know. She's Amy Winehouse. She's a big star, so obviously you would. But yeah, you, you see a lot. You see her winning a Grammy. Uh, I think her fifth Grammy win was a big part of the film. You see her go to the States to become more successful. She makes a, an album that's extremely successful for women, for a female artist in America, um, becomes a star in, all over the world. So, yeah, there's plenty, plenty that celebrates the great parts of her life and also plenty that, you know, tells you about the dark sides. And obviously she died so young because of it. So yeah, it's very tragic and also partly, you know, a nice story, but also, you know, a very sad story. So I'll give it an eight out of 10. I think it was good. Um, also the actress that played her, she was pretty good. Uh, she looked the part, you know. It, it was pretty close to the real Amy Winehouse. Um, she got it right, and uh, I think she had a good time playing this role, clearly, because uh, you could tell she's having a lot of fun with it. So, yeah, it was like, 
it was really good. It was really good to hear, like, the, like to see this actress to, to, to do well because, like, she played Damon Hill Whitehouse really well. I, I think that was an excellent job. Um, and this comes from someone who, like, I wasn't like a huge fan of Amy Whitehouse. I listened, listened to some of her songs. I did like them back then. Well, I wasn't like a huge Amy Whitehouse fan, but even I'm just like, even though I didn't know her that well either, in terms of like, you know, I don't mean like personally, I mean like, you know, Noah has a celebrity, um, even I can see like, she played her really well, so, yeah, from what I know, she played her really well, <laughs> and she, um, she, the, the look was perfect, like, she, she looked the part, she looked the part, so yeah, 8 out of 10, and the performance by the actress, 9 out of 10, and that's it for now, um, what else is coming out this month? When is that Starman movie coming out with Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt? I want to see that. I think that's soon in a few weeks. And uh, Planet of the Apes, I think those are next. But there's plenty more coming out this year. But yeah, there's been some interesting biopics recently in recent months. You got Priscilla, you got Bob Marley, and you got this now. So uh, I wonder if what, who else they'll do next. Because <laughs> they seem to love biopics lately. And I don't blame them, you know, you make the stories out of them, so. It's, really, it's just really sad that she died so young, man, you know. That's just tragic, but I'm 27. I'm 28, so, that's, it's just, yeah. Puts it into perspective, really. Uh, this is your boy Zavanoff. Please like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, have a good day. Sorry to end this on a sad note, but that was a sad movie. Goodbye.